Hello and welcome to Opulent Mobility 2022. This in-person exhibit was mounted October 9th through November 4th, 2022, and it is curated by Laura Brody, me, and Anthony Tesler. Many thanks to Larissa Nickel for all of her help in getting this exhibit set up. As you walk into the gallery, the first thing you see is this lovely Opulent Mobility logo, which was hand-painted by Larissa Nickel. The logo was designed by the public design students at Cal State University, Northridge. You also see Cat Chuddy's wonderful sick coat, along with a cane, which is labeled Lightweight Attitude Adjustment Tool, which is fabulous. Cat Chuddy, Sick Coat, 2022. Thread, faux leather, goodwill coat, studs, netting. 24 inches by 18 inches by 14 inches. $1,500. A dark-haired figure in a black face mask models a nubby yellow wool sport coat with black lapels. Two loops of delicate black chain dangle from the breast pocket. Small, square black studs define the upper edge of the two flat pockets. The buttonholes are stitched in black. Applicate on the back of the coat are large capital letters cut from textured black leather that read SICK. Two black roses adorn the shoulders with trailing black threads. A piece of black mesh pokes from the right vent, and the edges of the vent are trimmed with iridescent beads. Coming around to the left of the sick coat is a wall where we have work by Ellen Mansfield, Ash Hagerstrand, and Judith Klausner. Ellen Mansfield makes tiles and ceramic art that celebrate American Sign Language and the deaf experience. So for this exhibit, she sent me digital files of some of her work. This is part of a series in process that is illustrating the alphabet of ASL. Ellen Mansfield, Sunset slash Sunrise, 2020. Photo, 11 inches by 14 inches, $300. You okay, me okay, 2020. Photo, 11 inches by 14 inches, $300. Lauren Clerk's Compass to Deaf Education, 2020. Photo, 11 inches by 14 inches, $300. The three-dimensional plaster hands are all right hands and each face toward the right. In sunset slash sunrise, the first finger of the bright yellow hand touches the tip of the thumb and the remaining fingers are slightly curved. The tile background is blue, with four horizontal peach-colored stripes, which have small concentric circles on them. Three of the stripes are equally spaced from the middle to the top. The fourth is wider and rests at the bottom. In upper left are two small circles with sunbursts in the center. Below the thumb is a larger disc with an eye shape embossed on it. In You OK, Me OK, the tile background is lavender, with a large circle with concentric rings. The rings are dark orange, becoming lighter towards the center. A white hand is placed diagonally over the orange circles. The first finger points up, the middle finger points forward, and the remaining fingers are bent. In Lauren Clark's Compass to Deaf Education, the tile background is pale blue with ovals that have a starburst inside. In front is a hand with the fingers pointing upward. The fingers are gently curved and the thumb is straight. The back of the hand and fingers are blue, while the thumb is yellow. Between the fingers and the thumb is a starburst with orange, purple, and blue rays. On either side of the hand are long feathers with blue, black, and gray stripes. And below the right feather is a bottle of ink. Solid blue feathers encircle the wrist. And then we have this shiny section in between Ellen Mansfield's work. This is Judith Klausner's Jeweled Inhalers and Ash Hagerstrand's Glittery Picture. In her own words, Ash Hagerstrand uses digital landscape, virtual augmentation, and identity curation to explore the fraught relationship that disabled and chronically ill people have with technology. Ash Hagerstrand, Venus and the Man Playing God, 2021. Photo. 8 inches by 10 inches, $400. In the foreground, a pale-skinned woman lies in a bed with white sheets and a magenta-colored blanket. Supported on her left elbow, she faces us. She has an oval face, dragonfly sunglasses with pale amber lenses, and wavy shoulder-length pale blue hair. She wears a white blouse and black underwear. The blouse is unbuttoned to reveal her chest and stomach. 
Her breasts are covered. An unclear tattoo is on her left thigh. In her right hand, she holds a glitched cane that is propped against her bent right leg. Behind her is a man in a white lab coat with his back to us. He wears a face mask and reaches for an IV bag. On the wall behind him are three overlapping computer dialogue boxes that all display warning. Shimmering peach-colored swag curtains hang on both sides of the dialogue boxes. Fat yellow roses adorn the curtain on the left and rest under the woman's bent elbow. Underneath are the wonderful and extremely detailed jeweled inhalers by Judith Klausner. These pieces make a great commentary on medication, how it can be extremely expensive and valuable, but it's not something that we tend to focus on and in fact tend to hide in our culture. That maybe there's an alternative approach to these issues that really all of us have with medication and with medicine and help. Judith Klausner, Flovent Inhaler. 2014. Plastic inhaler, Swarovski crystals, 2.5 inches by 1.25 inches by 1.75 inches, $1,200. Adver discus inhaler, 2014. Plastic inhaler, Swarovski crystals, 3.5 inches by 3.5 inches by 1.25 inches, $1,740. The flow vent inhaler is L-shaped with the medication container inserted into a cylinder on the longest upright side. The inhaler is covered with glittering lavender crystals. A round mouthpiece extends from the short side and is covered with peach-colored crystals. The Adver discus is a disc shaped with a small opening on the outside curve on the right. It is covered in purple crystals on the bottom, becoming lavender at the top. In the center is a white circle of crystals with Adver spelled out in dark colored crystals. Above the letters is a semicircle of yellow. Around the corner are works by Ju90, Lisa Marita Pates, and Rachel Ungerer. Ju90 has been sharing her works with Opulent Mobility since 2015 and has really truly varied, exciting, and interesting works. This particular piece is called Platinum Jubilee. It was shot during Queen Elizabeth II's Jubilee celebrations. The Queen Elizabeth at that time preferred not to attend her own Jubilee events if it meant she was seen in a wheelchair. Jew 90, Platinum Jubilee, 2020. Photograph, 14 inches by 11 inches, $250. Jew sits in an antique wheelchair before a background of gray and pewter colored velour. The wooden frame is painted silver, and the seat and back are woven grids of bright blue wire. Jew has pale skin and wears glasses with black frames. A gold ring is reflected in the lenses. Her hair is covered by a green turban trimmed with gold braid, topped by a gold crown with green jewels, and finished with two-foot-long green feathers. Jew wears a black crushed velvet top with pale gray crushed velvet pants and shiny silver shoes. Buckled over the top is a back brace adorned on the right side with royal blue fabric and blue and silver jewels. Her left hand rests on a purple carved walking stick. Her ringed right hand is raised in a wave with the elbow bent at her waist. Right next to the photograph is Lisa Marita Pate's Muse, the Ataxian. This beautiful and fragile piece relates to her experience with ataxia, which has attacked her motor skills and ability to walk, talk, and balance herself. There are actually two pieces in the Muse series, and very sadly, one of them fell off the wall and broke when we were installing the show. Thankfully, we were able to salvage all the pieces, and it has been sent back to the artist so that she can do a proper repair job. Lisa Marita Pates, Muse series. Slash Ataxians, 2020, paper clay, hand-woven copper wire, fiberglass, enamel, 25 inches by 36 inches by 12 inches, $1,700 for both, $900 each. The two floating figures have wire mesh wings, pale faces and hands, and twisted wire bodies and limbs stuffed here and there with bits of crumpled paper. The paper has hints of color, dark green, peach, and brown. The figure on the left has both hands extended to the front. 
It has an oval face, closed eyes, straight nose, dark red lips, and a round chin. The eyes are red-rimmed, and there are smudges of red on the cheeks. The figure's left leg is bent at the knee, with the foot behind, while the right leg and foot point down. The figure on the right has both hands raised over its head. Its upper legs are fused and end in two strands of wire. This figure has a broad forehead, closed eyes, wide nose, and a pointed chin. The right side of its face is thinner than the left. On the right is Rachel Ungerer's painting, My Power, My Love. On the opposite side of the exhibit is her painting, Here for All of You. Rachel Ungerer's work explores the intersection of queerness and disability and challenges the idea that disability is a burden to others. It celebrates disabled sexuality. Rachel Ungerer, Here for All of You, 2022. Acrylic on canvas, 28 inches by 22 inches, $782. My Power, My Love, 2022. Acrylic on canvas. 20 inches by 16 inches, $416. Both works are executed with wide, bold brush strokes. In Here for All of You, the figure on the left faces us. They have a full figure, bald head, round face, small eyes, toothy grin, and hold a cane. They wear a choker necklace with an O-ring pendant. The figure on the right is seated in a wheelchair and has dark wavy hair flowing down their back. An earring glints in one ear. The figure on the right kisses the grinning figure's cheek. Both are painted in purple, blue, and dark pink, with highlights of silvery white on shoulders and forearms. My Power, My Love. This work has a background of yellow with hints of orange. Two figures face one another, lips not quite touching. The figure on the left is painted dark red with highlights of white on the jawline and shoulder and has long wavy hair. The one on the right also has long wavy hair and sits in a wheelchair. This figure is painted with darker highlights on forehead, cheek, and the top of the shoulder. The figure on the right pulls on the collar of the figure on the left. Going back to the entryway of the exhibit, and just around the corner, is Misty Stokes' work, Effervescent. This piece celebrates disability and wheelchair use. Misty Stokes, Effervescent, 2022. Photo, 14 inches by 11 inches, $250. A bronze-colored wheelchair rests over scattered geometric shapes in colorful patterns. The chair is directly on top of a face with a small yellow nose and full red, pink, and orange striped lips. Below, the colorful triangle shapes are filled with dashed lines, squiggles, or dots. A few of the shapes are black and white. On the other side is David Isaacson's useless assistive device. David puts together these wonderful Dada-esque assemblages of odd and unexpected pieces wonderful sense of humor, and always a surprise. David Isaacson, Useless Assistive Device, 2022. Photo, 14 inches by 11 inches, $250. Two 12-foot long skis are attached by a yellow bracket between two upright wheelchair wheels set a foot apart. The skis extend further forward than behind the wheels. A tennis racket is centered between the wheels and over the bracket. The tips of the skis rest on a concrete walkway in dappled sunlight. Crates, a black tarp, and clutter flank the walkway. Across from David Isaacson's work is Caitlin Combs' untitled self-portrait. In this one, each hand is painted a different color, sky blue and deep purple. This really accents the hands and shows off the limb difference, makes them a little bit more abstract, but highlights how beautiful they are. Caitlin Combs, Untitled Self-Portrait, 2022. Photo, 13 inches by 20 inches, $300. Caitlin's curved fingers rest on their left thigh with the right hand near the knee. Their right hand and arm are painted sky blue and the left hand and arm are purple. There is a circular scar on the back of the right hand and a long puckered scar running up the forearm. They have a sickle-shaped scar on the left wrist. They wear faded blue jeans, and part of a blue ribbed top is visible. 
On the opposite wall are prints from Kelly Gillespie. These are photos from the installation of her wonderful work, Over Medicated Under, which took 4,800 prescription pill bottles, sliced them, zip tied them together, and made these beautiful undulating shapes. Kelly Gillespie, Over Medicated Under, 2022. Photos, 24 inches by 36 inches, $400. This large abstract hanging sculpture is constructed from uniformly cut rings of golden orange prescription containers. The rings are joined in six places by cable ties neatly trimmed. The mesh-like creation floats with undulating bumps and bubbles. On the opposite side of the front wall are three prints from Bronte Grimm. Disassociate, Disperse, and Fall. This series is part of their recent Disassociate series. They're digitally created photos on the topic of disassociation. So there are no live models, they're all 3D modeled. Bronte Grimm, Disperse, 2021, photo, 14 inches by 11 inches, $500. Disassociate, 2021, photo, 14 inches by 11 inches, $500. Fall, 2021, photo, 14 inches by 11 inches, $500. The figures in the photos have light tan skin, long necks, and dark red lips. The backgrounds are dark. The figure in Disperse faces us. Her hands are raised just below her face. Her left hand cups her right. A tiny tattoo adorns the side of her middle finger. She looks up, chin raised. Her face above her nose is obscured by a brown mist. A lock of straight brown hair curves around her neck and right shoulder. A thin beige spaghetti strap digs into her right shoulder. In Disassociate, her face is tilted left. The face is blurred, suggesting motion. Her dark hair flows behind her. Light falls from the upper right, creating a bright light patch on the left side of her face. In Fall, a slender nude woman floats with her head in shadows, back arched. Behind and below her is the same, much fainter figure. Light falls from above on the right. Across from Bronte's work are three prints from Annelies Slabink, a Belgian artist whose work deals with mental health and medical issues. These are called Depressed, Not Depressed. You can see she's embroidered little emblems on the forehead of brain scans of a depressed and a not depressed brain. Annalise Slobink. Depressed slash not depressed. 2014. Photographs. 8 inches by 10 inches. $250 each. Two sepia-toned photographs of a figure with short dark hair, oval face, dark almond-shaped eyes, a straight nose, thin lips, and round chin. The figure wears a dark-colored garment with a close-fitting mandarin collar. Centered on the forehead is an off-white circular patch with a flower petal-like wavy edge. A cross-section of the brain is embroidered on the patch. In Depressed, the cross-section has blots of yellow, pink, and gray with a large parrot-shaped section of blue. Not Depressed, has larger yellow sections amid undulating thin green and blue bits with a sliver of purple. Last but not least is my Melusine. She stands eight feet tall and will probably be nine feet when her wings and arms are added. This piece is about autoimmune disease, female autonomy, and emotional labor. She's displayed right next to her custom scent, which was designed by my friend Amber Jobin of Aether Arts Perfume. A. Laura Brody, Melusine, 2022. Reused walker, textiles, and notions over plastics, cartons, and wire. 98 inches by 42 inches by 36 inches. $30,000. A sculpture of an armless female form is supported by a matte silver walker. Curved silver handles poke out from the front of the figure's full right hip, while the other handle is hidden. The sculpture has two tentacle-like legs ending in fishtails that flop to the rear. The body is covered in undulating stripes of shiny fabrics, magenta, purple, and turquoise, lime green, gray, gold, dark green, and royal blue. 
Columns of small semicircles in contrasting colors with the straight side up float around the body and legs. The curved edge of the semicircles are trimmed with zipper teeth. In the rear, the tubes of the walker extend from the left hip and the right thigh. The figure has a narrow waist and full bust, and the face is green, purple, gold, and blue, with embroidered red lips and purple eyes. A flowing veil covers the top of the head, and the front of the hair is braided in multiple strands. Clear circular openings on the left breast and at each armhole reveal the plastic waste stuffed inside. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour of Opulent Mobility 2022. The photographs are courtesy of LA Art Documents, Heidi Marie Photography, Laura Brody, me, and also from all of the artists. Thank you to all of them who really make this show what this is. For more details, please go to www.opulentmobility.com and click on OM22 in the menu.